Here, here. Here. Court's called to order. mind of the Commonwealth that this prisoner is a confirmed chicken thief. He has no place in this God-fearing community. He is a vagrant. He cometh from no man knows whence. Since arriving in our midst, he has been known to do no honest work. The Commonwealth of Kentucky asks, yea, demands, that he be a judge guilty and sentenced to six months on the chain gang. <clears throat> hey, hey boy, wake up there. Sheriff, wake him up there. If anybody's gonna sleep in this court, it'll be me. Hey, wake up. Yes, Come here, boy. There. Come on over here, right there. What's your name? Mm, the Poindexter. Poindexter? Yeah. Who gave you that? Mr. Ranny. Ranny? You mean Major Randolph Poindexter from down at, uh, at Pine Bluff? Yeah, the Pine Bluff. Uh, oh. Well, looks like you uh, Poindexters is always getting mixed up with some chicken somehow. Uh, Hey, Sergeant, it seems like uh, I recollect uh, you and Major Ranny having some uh, connection with the flesh of the fowl at one time. Don't go to we didn't. You know, Major Ranny was the fire-eatingest soldier that ever chased the yank up a tree. You know, Billy, you and me put near starved that day when we were forging for a snack after the battle of Chickamauga. Chickamauga? No, no, it was a, it, it was the Battle of Kennesaw Mountain. There's no such a thing of a chicken Oh, you're both wrong. Bring them wrong. It was the summer of 63. <laughs> and we were just outside of Nashville. <laughs> no, Bill is right. I remember. For wasn't I there, Richard? Yes. Your Honor, the Commonwealth objects to this digression. Now, 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 Senator, you know, now, now the point is that, uh, that the Major, uh, he acted the part of, the, of a gentleman and a soldier, and he removed the temptation from out of our path by eating up all the fat hens in the whole bunch and leaving us nothing but a lot of old skinny Dominic roosters. You remember, boys? Come to think of it, Billy, they were Plymouth Rocks. There was no such a thing that were Yankee uh, chicken. There were no. Rhode Island Reds. But I know, but I could no, tell the Plymouth Rocks. Rock. Yankee Plymouth Rocks. Go on, Senator, I wouldn't, I, I don't 
don't get on your high horse that way. You know, we ain't in a great big hurry, but uh, incidentally, but, uh, what do you what do you charge with that, boy? Nothing, Judge, but I wouldn't let them chickens show up. I just fishing. Fishing? Why was you fishing? Down Sleepy River. <laughs> there ain't no fish in Sleepy River. Ah, oh, sir. Ain't neither. Full of catfish. Talks uh, right, Jimmy. Yeah? So it's why focus. I catch bull ass catfish in there and law. There's your proof he's lying. Here, come here. What 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 do you use for bait? Oh, I got a hunk of beef liver. Beef liver? Yeah, yeah I have to yeah, take the beef funny. liver and put it on the hook and chunk it out there, let them have the first piece with nothing to see them. Then you put some more on that and chunk it out there and then they think they're gonna get that for nothing and you just you catch them as long as you got the liver. Mm -hmm. And I go on there all the time and I don't care nothing with that liver. to take down the judge's clothes, got to take them in the house, yes, Lord, got to get out that old ironing board, fix them up for the judge to wear, mm -hmm. yes, Lord, that's what I was going to do. Praise the Lord, Mr. Room. Is you a hand or is you a Hi, Aunt Delphi. How come you here? The judge say you up there at that college learn to be a lawyer, man. Aunt Delphi, I got stomach trouble. Lord help you, white child. What them Yankees been feeding you? Not a darn thing. That's the trouble. <laughs> what have you got for supper? Mr. Room, you stay here. Us is going to kill the high stepness loose in the yard and a great big bowl of milk gravy and grits. And waffles? Don't you worry none, honey. You was home now. Miss Rose, home. Miss Rose, home. Miss Rose, home. Miss Rose. Hey, Uncle Billy. Get that baby in. Oh, well, if it ain't wrong, <laughs> well, salt me down. What happened up there? Did uh, them Yankees kick you out of that law school? Huh? Mm, sure they did, with a diploma. You're now looking at a full-fledged member of the bar. <laughs> Let me look at you. Mm. <laughs> Full fledged, my guess. <laughs> yeah, lawyer. You know, you, you better get your britches half sold, because you're going to sit around a long time before you get your first client. <laughs> well, I don't mind, Uncle Billy. <laughs> you know what happened to me before I got my first client, don't you? Lord, I, I, I sat through two Republican administrations before I. Who are you playing? I'm just doing a little practicing here for the championship. I got Jeff here. He's doing the retrieving for me. Uh, me and uh, Herman Felsberg is going to play against Jimmy Bagby and Doc Lake. Two of them balls down there, will you, Jeff? Two again. Mm -hmm. Remember the last time? Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you what had happened to Jimmy Bagby now. He's, uh, just want to show you how far I can... Ooh, look at... <laughs> look at them Yankee shoes. You <laughs> got all that, Jeff. Look yeah. at that. Yes, I never seen shoes with buttons on them before. <laughs> I seen pants, but <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, say that's fine. <laughs> oh, uh, just uh, take your button shoes with you and just step that off and see just how far it is. Oh, I think that's about good. a record. One, two, three, four. Hello. Glad to see me? Why, I thought you were still up north. Uh-uh. I got in this morning. How'd you know I was back here? Well, I didn't, but Uncle... But... Why, you, you look pretty with those things. Isn't this a lovely spray? Mm-hmm. Now, young lady, I want to ask you a question. Please let me down, Rome. Miss Gillespie, will you please tell this court why you didn't answer my letters? I've got to go in. Really, I have. Now, tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you. You know why. All I know is that you've changed since I went away. 
Well, that isn't it, Rome. It's, it's just that we've grown up. You mean you don't like me anymore? Oh, Rome. Well, if my mother or anybody has said anything... Oh, Ellie May, I mean... Well, I'm old enough to choose my own friends. Please let me go. We've got to get this thing settled once and for all. I've got to go in. Really, I have. All right, then. I'm coming back tonight and find out what it's all about. You can't. I have an engagement. Who with? Fleming Talley. Hmm. Well, how about tomorrow night? Oh, Rome, it's no use. All right. That's the way you feel about it. You can sit right there till we understand each other. That's all right. That's all right. We don't we need no more practice for them old men. Huh? Besides, that uh, exertion calls for a jeweler. Yes, yeah. but you can wait for that young gentleman before you... Wait for him? Uh, Unless young folks has changed since I was skirmishing around. He won't be back for quite a while. Uh, uh, look at that goat. Ain't that a pretty sight? What, that goat? There ain't nothing pretty in the world than two young folks in love in the spring. Do about that goat. Oh, goat. My Lord, ain't you got any sentiment? Ain't you got no girl? Ain't you ever, wasn't you ever in love? Talk, stand around here talking about a goat or something. But your mint. What about my mint? A goat in your mint bed. It's in my mint bed. A girl. Yeah. A girl. Acting like you. Oh, Get him now. Get you hungry. Don't look. Why, William Freak. Oh, hello, Carrie. This is a fine how do you do. What will the neighbors say? I'm ashamed of you. What's ailing you now? That gum goat come in here and eat up my mint bed there. I bet he must have been the ruination of a million juleps. You and your precious mint juleps. A circuit court judge. Where's your dignity? Dignity? <laughs> I don't reckon the priest family will ever have to worry about dignity, Carrie. Not as long as you're alive and kicking. Well, it's a good thing somebody in this family has pride. I always told my brother when he married you that he saved the family name. Well, if he were living, he wouldn't be fooling around the front yard with a goat. That's not what I came for. Have you seen Rome? Oh, Rome? Rome? Oh, uh, appears like I did see that uh, son of yours around here a while ago. I expect he's downtown, though, now, uh, you know, strutting around, uh, showing off his button shoes. Now, don't you play possum with me. As if I didn't know you'd been encouraging that, that girl over there to set her cap for Rome. Carrie, Carrie, if I didn't know that you had the biggest heart of any woman in the world, I'd think you're the most suspicious creature that ever come down the pipe. Never mind that. You come up on the porch. I want to talk to you. If I'd have known that's the way you felt about it, I wouldn't have hurried home so fast. I'm sorry, Rome. But after all, you have your career, and your family, and everything in the world that matters to you right here. I don't think you care what matters to me. That's not fair, Rome. After all, I'm, I'm only telling you for your own good. William, I'm not a woman to beat about the bush. This business of Rome and that girl next door has got to stop. What do you got against Ellie May? She's an awful sweet girl, seems to me. She's got gumption and she teaches school and supports herself. I don't want to be unkind. She may be a very nice girl and all that. But after all, Rome is one of the Kentucky priests. And the name of priest means something in Kentucky. Well, I was... I've never heard that it meant intolerance. It means good stock and family pride. You know the kind of stock she comes from. Yeah, her, uh, her ma come to this town penniless and died giving birth to Ellie May. I remember the night. She was a frail little woman. Uh, wasn't any bigger than Ellie May is now. And uh, just as pretty. But who was her father? Well, uh, nobody don't uh, rightfully know. Well, family may not mean anything to you, but it means a whole lot to me. I'm not going to have my grandchildren come into the world under a cloud. You uh, haven't by any chance picked a uh, hard Maydew as a grandpappy, have you? Oh, I know you've never liked Senator Maydew. 
But you can't say anything against his folks. They've got money, they're an old family, and Virginia's a lovely girl. She's always been crazy about Rome. He could do a lot worse. Well, I guess uh, me and Rome, we ain't got anything to say about it. I knew you'd come around to my way. You gonna, uh, you gonna stay for supper, ain't you, Carrie? Not tonight, thank you, William. The Daughters of the Confederacy are having a chicken supper at Cape May Dunes, and I'm late already. Looks like you daughters get more ferocious every year towards Yankees and uh, fried chicken. <laughs> you got your badge on there. Yes. Mighty pretty. <laughs> Good night, William. Sometimes I, uh, I think you women got more badges and medals out than the soldiers did. Good night, Carrie. Listen, that old whippoorwill uh, calling his mate. Him and his kin has been nesting around here for now on 30 years. It's a lonesome kind of sound, isn't it, Uncle Billy? Mm, it is so. You know, the good Lord never meant for nobody, either man or bird, to live by themselves. Uncle Billy, why didn't you come and live with us after Aunt Margaret died? Oh, I... <clears throat> I never could stand him all cooking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fine swing over there on that old porch. I wouldn't be surprised if they ain't pretty girl sitting in it now. He's got another fella tonight. Ellie May sure is pretty. Well, it gets her, will certainly have to do some prancing. He can't sit around and look glum all the time. There he is now. Who? That slim tally. The barber? Yeah. Gives off a poor shade now. Whoa. Whoa, baby. Nothing will get your mind off women folks like work. Will you run back in my library there and get my old Kentucky Code of Statues? It's, uh, it's an old calfskin book up on the top shelf there. Yes, 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 yes. It gets me that brain there. Long years. I'm just going to see if I can't stop him. Gabby Rives and Joe Herringer, you know, the boys that work for me down at my barber shop. Well, they comes to me tonight and wants me to go over to Old Town. Some high-flying gals over there. But I tell them no. I can have all the fun I want right here at home. Now, guess who I was talking about? Couldn't I? Couldn't I make you some lemonade? Lemonade? Sure, honey. And I got something to sweeten it with. Right out of the mountains and... Kick it like a mule. <laughs> be doing around here? I, I don't know, Judge, but, but they, they're headed this way for him. Who do you, what are you talking about? Who's they? Uh, uh, some lady's pappy, uh, two-barrel shotgun. He said Mr. Talley's been messing around. He sure is in a killing mood. Well, you mean that uh, he's going to annihilate him? Uh, uh, no, so he, he just, just going to shoot him, that, that's all. Well, there ain't a thing that I can do about it. Uh, my job don't stop until uh, they've got him all uh, laid out in the morgue, uh, full of buckshot. 
cold and dead and uh, ready for burial. Then, then I steps in. Uh, but but uh, you, 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 Judge, you, you, you have the law. Oh, I can't do a thing about it, as I said before, until the shooting is over. And uh, then I'll certainly see that the uh, murderer gets a fair trial. What book? That Kentucky law book. Oh. Maybe I didn't have one. Ellie May is waiting for you over there. What? I, 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 how do you know? Are you sure? Now, don't be standing here like a jaybird gawking when I tell you she's waiting. Go on out of here and go. Long time, honey, since you and the babies went away. Oh, uh, 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 Rome come home tonight. Little, little Robert E. would have been. He'd have been just the same age as. Uh, Rome is now. I guess it's Rome coming home. <laughs> what makes it seem more lonesome than ever around here? <laughs> Honey, you know that <laughs> that uh that fellow that uh, he, he enlarged that tin type, he, he sure did a sure did a pretty job. <laughs> I wish you could see it, honey. Put that gilt on there. 
Regular humbug. seen the flowers looking better this time of year. People are funny things. Always got their eyes set on something. Rome, he's got his eyes set on Ellie May and Carrie, she's got her set on old Hard Maydew's daughter, Perone. Old Hard, he's got his eyes set on my job. Some of them's gonna be disappointed. Mm -hmm. Them honeysuckles sure do smell sweet. Seem like I just can't get my nose full enough of them. over that grave. It's at Ellie May's mother's. He's gonna need a little shoeing pretty soon. Well, I'm, I'm mighty busy right now, Billy, shoeing them two horses over there. Hey, Bob, we better take a look at the judge's horse or something. Have a sniff, Good corn. You can smell the feet of the boy that plowed it. That breath of yours is like a hot mince pie. Where are you going? Going fishing. Sleepy River. Sleepy River? <laughs> Why don't you fish in the trough there? Need chewing? No. All right for a while yet. Hey, bad scar you got there. Bullet? Yeah. Get that in warm? No. Nope. Uh, folks say uh, you come from up north. Must have got that up there. We'll talk to Jeff before he finds out anything. Hey, wake up here. Somebody come along, steal a horse, and leave you sitting here holding on. All right, come on with that beef liver now. Don't tell me you ain't got it. Uh, it looks like I live in the walk all by itself. Lord. Here, oh, I'm going to catch any catfish and ain't got no bait. Take this dime now and hurry on back to town and get me that beef liver. Uh, sir. Hurry up now. Uh, I'm actually running now. You going to put your shoes on? Nothing. Save them in case my feet wear out. 
And then I have them. <laughs> Much sitting around as you do. It won't be your feet that'll wear out. Master Jesus wrote me a note. He wrote it on the wall. He tell me the poor must come be close. For he's coming to fetch me soon. Master Jesus. I took it off a of rich Yankee. Now you get in there and put them things away from there. Better get on over to that festival there. Dilsey might be needing you, too. How are you, Judge? Yeah. Just out, Reverend. Just out, look. I'm afraid it takes ice cream and cake to get you old soldiers out of the church. If the Lord ever gets in a jam, why, uh, he knows who to call on. That's right. Going to church isn't everything there is to it. Evening, Senator. Good evening, Reverend. Uh, Good evening, Judge Breeze. Good evening, Odd. There's one of our best church doors. Yes, it's uh, it's surprising uh, how far some men will go to get a few votes. Too bad we uh, we didn't get rid of him and get him off up to Congress there after him spending that uh, term in the state senate. I understand he thinks you deprived him of that honor. Me. <laughs> Great Democratic Party and Thomas Jefferson. Reverend of the Senator doesn't see it that way. You tell me that his cases in your court have taken on the appearance of a personal feud now that he's a candidate for your job. Oh, I wouldn't say that, Ashby. But I am going to have to get out and do some mighty tall lectioneering, you know. Hart is a, he's a spellbinder in a, in a silver tongue from way back. I'm just a yeah, old country Jake who kind of a baby kisser. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got much to offer the boys in the in the way of rhetoric. I understand he doesn't approve of your grammar. My grammar. First thing I learned in politics was when to say ain't. <laughs> Speaking of ice cream, did I ever tell you about Shiloh? Yeah. Didn't I? Didn't I? Wait a minute, Doc. Wait a minute. How much did you hear this? Well, sir, come in here. Come on, come on back here. What do you hear this? It was the eve before Shiloh, and them orders had to get across the river to General Beauregard. What did I do? I took off my clothes, and I stuffed the orders in my mouth, and I plunged in. It was pitch dark. Well, sir, I was going... Good evening. Screaming again, Jimmy? <laughs> Where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Right in the middle of the river. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. There you are. Swimming in 12 miles to go yet. And there I was, swimming and swimming, diving under and around Yankee gunboats. Yankee boats all around me, surrounded by Yankee gunboats. And me dodging, driving. Gunboats? Yes, sir. Putting them gunboats in there is a new tax, ain't it, Jimmy? No, Rome. Now, don't you young people think you have to entertain us old folks? That's right. Uh, run along now. Uh, they're getting ready for the candy pull. Perhaps Rome has other plans. Oh, no, he hasn't. I declare, Virginia gets prettier every time I see her. <laughs> and I know you're happy to have Rome at home again. Oh, he's such a nice boy. Don't they look fine together? Look at them horrors. Ah, yes. Youth, 
beauty. Why, I remember when I first crossed the threshold of my young manhood and listened to the sweet murmurings of my heart. <laughs> Double portion, please. You have a full portion there. Oh, but we can pay for it. Can't we, Ro? Gentlemen, I propose to conduct my campaign on a dignified basis. No personality. Others may censure the homespun manners of Judge Priest on the bench. Not I. Others may question the methods by which he has held political control of the county for a quarter of a century. Not I. Oh, gentlemen, merit alone will count in the forthcoming election. <clears throat> Where have you been keeping yourself, Rome? I think you've forgotten where I live. Nothing like that. Mother and Daddy are always teasing me about you. I tell them you don't care anything about me. That you have a girl up north. Well, even if I did have, haven't you got every boy in town on your string? Oh, those stick in the mud. They make me tired. Besides, I've been waiting for somebody else. Attention. Say, what's the what's the prettiest gal at the at the festival here, mooping around back here by herself? Uh huh. You want some taffy, George? <laughs> I ain't much of a taffy puller. On, on second thoughts, uh, you can give me a water that too. Right. Put the butter on your hands first. Oh. Hello, Uncle Billy. Oh, no. You ain't doing that right. What's the matter with it? Here. Let me see your hands. You ain't got no butter on there. No wonder. Here, here, let me show it. Here, put mine in here. Let me show it. There. Go on up there. Run on up there and uh, put some more stick on your hand there. Go on, right up there. All right, Uncle Billy. That's it. Now, here. Put that right over in there now. Now, here, here, here. Now, there's one. That's the thing. Candy pulling. You got to keep your mind right on it. Right on it. Look at That's how you're getting it all on your hand. Keep your mind on what you're doing there now. Lord, you pulling candy with the champion candy puller of this neighborhood now. <laughs>
everybody. Good oh, morning, Judge. You next. Hey, Flam, you got the only lively spot in town. Kiss <laughs> you. Here, Gabby, what's the uh, latest news in the paper this morning? <laughs> Hello, Lodge. Howdy, Judge. Hey, you ain't been in lately, have you? <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Good morning. Oh, nice day. Yeah. Oh, Flam. Here she comes. And does she like her Flemish? <laughs> hey, Flem, when you two getting hitched? Don't know it. I heard nobody talking about marriage. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't scared of no shotgun wedding, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Not as long as she ain't got no paw. <laughs> Hey, that fellow's gonna make himself mighty unpopular around here. That's right, Judge. Yeah. There's about 2,000 male citizens here that's gonna be mighty sore at him. Yeah. When they find out that he punched you in the jaw before they could. Yes, he's gonna be awful unpopular around here. <laughs> Shine. How you expect the judge to win that croquet game with no solace in his stomach? Hey, Dusty, you done forgot the judge. The judge here. Yeah. All right, you can't say I never told you now. Leaving somebody here with all this stuff. I bet she gonna blame me for Don't see you around much. No. Trying to keep to yourself, don't you? Yeah. Mm. Joe, get some old beer while I knock me that 14 ball down there in the corner. Oh, I'll pay for it. Hey, Phil, give us this out there. Yeah? Yes. Come on, Mr. Gibson. No, hold your horses now. He'll be heading to you in a minute, going home. You fellas with me? Sure. Sure with you. Another? Oh, no, 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 no. You're dead on me. Oh, no, no, no. You're dead on me. 
how the South ever lost the war with a guy that could argue like you did. <laughs> Uncle uh, Billy. What is the matter? You've already made me lose a game. Uncle Billy, I've got you. a client. Oh, who is it? What's the matter with him? Gillis, you know, huh? Mr. Bagby's man. Huh? What's that, Bob Gillis? What's he doing? He cut up Flem Talley. Yeah? Uh-huh, and right after he gave himself up, he sent for me. Well, I'll be kicked by a mule. Did he cut him bad? Well, I can't tell yet. Gee, Uncle Billy, he sent for me. It'll be the, the biggest case in your whole court session, and I'll be defending him. Well, I, I, I wouldn't gloat too soon now. Oh, don't you worry. Hey, Ellie May. Hey, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get down to the jail and see what that fellow's got to say for yourself. I'm going to be yeah, telling. Darn robbers, they robbed us out of that. Herman, now, uh, you better get on down there with me because uh, you're liable to get a chance to uh, go his bail. Ellie May. Yeah. Ellie May, I got a client. I knew you would. Come on over. I want you to talk to Uncle Billy and tell you all about it. That sort of novelty, Herman. The barber getting cut up. Whoever cut him up couldn't have cut him much if he used the barber's razor. Where's Rose? I won't have it, that's all. He's getting mixed up with that kind of people. Oh, what's he done now? Well, he's done enough. Mother, what's the matter? Something wrong? If you're in the habit of discussing your affairs before strangers, I'm not. Well, Ellie May's not a stranger. Excuse me, Rome, I'll go. No, wait. All right. I have nothing to hide. Carrie, what's the matter? Have you, have you been out in the sun too much? You shut up, William Priest. I hold you responsible for everything that's happened. Are you going to defend that man? Mr. Gillis? <laughs> you bet I am. Oh, no, you're not. Mother, what do you mean, I'm not? I suppose you know what's behind this drunken brawl? No? Well, then I'll tell you. They were fighting over that girl in a saloon. Mother, that's not so. Carrie, you can accumulate more misinformation in a shorter time than anybody who told you all this rigmarole. Virginia made you. Who? Virginia made you. Oh. She got it straight from her father. And brought it straight to you. She wanted to warn Rome. I know you've never liked me, Mrs. Priest. I know you've tried to stop Rome from going with me. And I know you think I'm not good enough for him. Well, let me tell you something. If Rome were half as mean as you are, he wouldn't be good enough for me. Well, of all things. Gary, <laughs> looks like you run second. Oh, no, I don't. If Rome's father were alive, he'd back me up. Rome's already got himself talked about all over town with this girl, and I'm not going to have him publicly defending her in court. Well, Rome, <clears throat> see how your mother feels about it, so looks like you lost your first client. They're certainly hard to get, too. No, Uncle Billy, I haven't lost anything. Rome! Mother, I think I'm old enough to know my own mind. I said I'd defend Mr. Gillis, and I'm going to go through with it. Right this way, Reverend. Have that chair there, please, sir. Right. Hi, Gary. Hi, Duke. How are you? Yeah. All right. How are you,
May it please the court. I would point out that for many years, a political and personal difference has existed between your honor and myself. Now that I am a candidate for the exalted office which you have held for so many years, those differences have reached a point where for the protection of the people, I must demand an impartial trial judge. Uh, perhaps I'm, I'm getting deaf, but uh, the fact had, uh, had never reached me before. Are you insinuating that you won't get full justice in this court? I maintain that my language was sufficiently plain for any comprehension, however obtuse. But I will make it even franker. I charge in the presence of two witnesses, you took sides with Defendant Gillis in a prior attack upon this plaintiff. I've been sitting on this bench for nigh on 20 years, and nobody has ever asked me to step down. I'll file an affidavit of prejudice. That won't hardly be necessary. Then I call upon you, Judge Priest, to vacate the bench during this trial and yield your place to a qualified judge. I, uh... I'm, I'm not denying, Senator, that you, well, you kind of took my breath away. I guess I had uh, just sort of got the habit that I was took for granted here on this bench. Gosh, I was, I'd put near raised in this, in this courtroom. When I quit fighting, 65, for what we thought was right, I kind of calmed down, found out I, I couldn't lick the whole United States, come back here to my hometown, and I put up my shingle. It wasn't long before sitting on that bench. Maybe I did have a hankering for the spirit of the law, not the letter. But as far as I know, nobody ever found cause to complain till now. Now, you, uh, you jury, you forget everything that I've said. And, uh, my feelings has, uh, no place in the, uh, in the records of, of this trial. Now, if you'll excuse me, neither side has any objection. I'd like to ask the honorable Floyd Fairley, if he won't come up here and take, take my, my place on, on the bench. Gentlemen of the jury, in plain language, the defendant here burst in upon these three worthy citizens. I, I object, Your Honor. I deny that my client ever burst into any place or anything. Objection sustained. So be it, Your Honor. <clears throat> Nevertheless.
this, I shall demonstrate that my young friend's client here did burst into something. But armed with a lethal weapon, to wit, a dirk, dagger, or knife of deadly length and deadly sharpness, he burst into Mr. Talley's quivering flesh. I object, Your Honor. Objection sustained. Your Honor's humble servant bows to Your Honor's august ruling. In due time, Mr. Talley's scarred and mutilated person will bespeak the verity of my claim with a silent eloquence far exceeding the powers of my poor tongue. <laughs> We was playing bottle pool when he come in and attacked at me. Didn't you attack him with a billiard cue? Not until after he come at me with a knife. Well, it's just like Flem says. We wasn't paying him no mind and to be come looking for Flem. But weren't you three all armed with billiard cues? Well, never heard of nobody playing pool without him. <laughs> It's just like Flamin' Joe says. He come in looking for trouble. You don't like the defendant, do you? Who does? <laughs> Your Honor, the defense is through with the witness. I should think my young learned colleague would be glad to be through with the witness. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Your Honor, the prosecution rests. <laughs> Before the defense proceeds, this court recesses for half an hour. I don't know why you did it, Mr. Gillis. But Judge Priest told me what happened in the barber shop. Oh, you've got to tell the jury. They'd never convict you in a million years if they knew you were defending a girl's name. Don't you see? You can't think of me now. You've got to think of yourself. Look, Mr. Gillis, I don't want to bring Ellie May's name into this thing any more than you do. But she's right. They can give you ten years for assault. And the way Maydew's working on the jury, they'll give you the limit. Well, you've got to tell the truth, Mr. Gillis. Don't you see? You've got to. I ain't got to tell him anything. Yes, sir. Tally lied all the way through. And Herringer and Gab Rive, they lied too. It was three against one in Billy Gaynor's back room, and it's three against one in this here courtroom. Have you ever been in any other cutting scrape in town before? No, sir. That's all. One moment. Where do you come from, Mr. Gillis? I ain't a saying. You aren't exactly what we southerners would call a sociable person, are you? I mind my own business. Precisely. Except when you go looking for trouble. I don't go looking for trouble. But I ain't the one to run away from it. How long have you had a grievance against Mr. Talley? Mm, we had a run-in a few days before he jumped me. Oh, a run-in, eh? And what was this running about? Well, well, come on, tell the jury. What did you hate him for? I ain't a saying. Then you didn't have any reason for knifing. I didn't say that. Well, make up your mind. Why did you hate him? I ain't a saying. Oh, Your Honor. Anything further? That's all, Your Honor. The defense rests. This court will adjourn till tomorrow morning. It is our hope that the summations will be brief so that we may all attend the reunion ceremonies which begin at noon. Uh, 
it uh, looks like you uh, kind of caught me red-handed there. <laughs> yeah. Well, could I, uh, no, uh, kind of inveigle? Uh, been a long, tiresome day, and uh, it's uh, mostly meant. <laughs> no, thank you, William. I appreciate your subtlety. You know, I kind of thought that, uh, that, uh, that you'd be working on your Memorial Day address uh, uh, for tomorrow. Well, that'll take care of itself. What I'm worried about is this poor devil of a Gillis. You know Gillis? My trade takes me into queer quarters sometimes. Well, I feel just as sorry for that fellow Gillis as you do. Uh, I'm, I'm plumb out of it. Uh, hard. Got the best of me. He sure did. Case is closed. It's all settled. And I don't think Hard will, uh, he'll be fool enough to uh, reopen the case for nobody or nothing. William, I have a duty to perform. The Christian's duty. I'm going to violate the sacred confidence of another. I'm going to break a pledge of secrecy because it's the only course that I see that lies before me. I'm listening, Ashby. Twenty-five years ago. The judge is showing hard misery. Reckon folks ain't been acting just right. Maybe his stomach been complaining, and he needs a toddy this night. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Cause tomorrow he's got to be like Mr. Samson. Save and then you're from the lion's den. by the name of Mr. Hard Maydew. Yes, that mean man, that cold house. Yeah, well, now you see that he gets that, but don't you let him know how he got there. That's see? all I got to do, sir. Yeah. Don't say, wait a minute. Can, can, can you play Dixie on that thing there? Well, that coon coat. Yes, I played Dixie with Martin through Georgia. Oh, way ahead. Martin. Marching through Georgia. Yeah, I got you out of one lynching. Yes, but for that coon coat, I know I was going to get you playing coat. marching through Georgia, I'll join the lynchers. Come on, Chillis. Hi, Hi you. What do you all got in your basket? Oh, the chicken. Chicken? <laughs> well, that's just what I got. That's what the judge like. You may begin your summation, Mr. Prosecutor. May it please your honor. 
Since adjournment yesterday, certain information has come into the hands of the Commonwealth, which, in the interest of justice, impels me to reopen the case. The Commonwealth desires to recall the defendant Gillis for further cross-examination. Very well, Mr. Maydew. Proceed. Robert Gillis, take the stand. Your Honor, as uh, I recollect our procedure, for the time being, I'm an ordinary member of the bar. In good standing? Not ordinary, sir, but absolutely in good standing. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Con. Then I have the uh, honor of uh, announcing myself as uh, associate counsel for the defense. Seeing as the case has uh, <coughs> been uh, reopened, Mr. Gillis, were you always a man of turbulent and violent nature? I always left them alone as left me alone. Is that so? What was the name of the man you once upon a time murdered? I. I never looked on it as no. No, it wasn't murder. A man was killed, wasn't he? Yes. And they stuck you in jail, didn't they? Yes. And they charged you with murder, didn't they? Yes. And the jury found you guilty, didn't they? Yes. Were you sentenced to be hung? No, I... I went up for life. Did you escape or were you pardoned? I ain't a saying. And I won't tell you no more, no matter what you ask me. You don't need to. <clears throat> Judge Priest, your witness, no questions, Your Honor. But Uncle Billy, hasn't the defense any evidence to offer in rebuttal, Judge Priest? One character witness, Your Honor. Mr. Clerk, will you kindly call Reverend Ashby Brand? Brand. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, in case not funny in this court? I do. Reverend Brand, before you come to this town, what was your occupation? In my early manhood, before I took holy orders, I had the honor to be a captain of artillery in the late war. In the war of the rebellion? No, sir. The war for the Southern Confederacy. Yes, sir. Yeah, right, sir. That's right. That's right. He's right. Yeah. That's right. My, my error, my... One moment, please, Your Honor. I yield to no man in love and everlasting devotion to that sacred lost cause for which my people fought and bled. But though I cherish all those dear and everlasting memories which even the bare mention of that great conflict must awaken in every true Kentuckian's bosom. I fail to see any possible connection between this reverend gentleman's military record and the guilt of this man, Gillis. <laughs> of the gospel to tell his story in his own way. Neander along, Reverend Brand. As many of you know, I am a Virginian. On the day my state seceded from the Union, I enlisted. I was a private in Penn's Virginia Battery. By the latter end of the third year, I was in command of that battery. All the officers ranking me had been killed or disabled. We lost heavily at Chancellorsville. And at Fredericksburg, 
we were almost wiped out. We kept our field pieces. We kept our pieces until the end. But we had not sufficient men to man those guns, nor anywhere to turn for more men. There were no more men left to come in. The Confederacy in 64 was robbing both the cradle and the grave for cannon fodder. Well, sir, I got temporary leave and went to Richmond to see our war governor. I said to him, sir, I've come to you to ask for men to serve my guns. He laughed and said, tell me where they are to be found. I said, among the chain gangs from the state penitentiary. He said, you've come too late, young man. I've freed every convict that might conceivably be trusted with freedom. There are left only the lifers, and I dare not turn them loose. They are working on the guard, building defenses for you to fight behind. He opposed me, but I argued with him. And finally, I won. He gave me authorization, signed it, and with his own hand, affixed the seal of the sovereign state of Virginia. I rode back to the line, sir, and I found my chain gang. I told them to drop their tools and line up before me. I told them, if you go with me, you go to face a hell of destruction and suffering and death. But I said, if you do go, you go as free men, as soldiers of the Confederacy. Your past will lie behind you, and your future, if you survive, is in your own hands. And I promise you this much, if you stand fast, if you do your duty, if bravely and honorably you acquit yourselves as men, then such of you as lived through to the end, and some of you will live, are not to come back to this. It's for you to decide. Those who remain behind Stand fast. Those who come with me, advance one pace. Gentlemen of the jury, I tell you they came at me like a wave from the sea. Every one of them. And as time went on, they won for themselves the name of the battalion from hell. with the scars of their shekels still on their legs. They fought for the South like men, none better. And they died like men, most of them. I was one of those men of whom I wish to speak a special word of tribute. He stood out for his courage and his fidelity, for his worth as a soldier and a man. Most of all, for his invariable truthfulness under all circumstances. He was from the mountains of my own state, a man who spoke little, but did much. I saw him once go out under fire during a battle to rescue at his own risk a wounded Union officer who lay there helpless between the lines. Another time, our stars and bars was wrested from our hands. We fought breast to breast that day. This man of whom I'm speaking threw himself on a riderless horse and rode into the thicket, and by the grace of God, came galloping back from the jaws of death. Our colors clutched in his hand. And another day, when every man who served his gun 
excepting him, was down. I saw him when the Union infantry charged, sitting astraddle his useless gun, and with a rammer for his only weapon, waiting for the enemy to come within reach. The counter charge from our infantry saved him. But he had stood fast, and he was alone. After the surrender, I kept his secret. I kept it to this very hour. So I've seen him daily at his work, watching over his daughter, providing for her education through me, all unknown to LMA. Gentlemen, as a soldier, I knew that man as Roger Gillespie. You know him by the name he now wears, Robert Gillis. Hooray for Jeff Davis, the Southern Confederacy, and Bob Gillis! Keep on going, keep going, you can have that white mask. 